pretty easy to see the differences in these two cameras, but I wanted to go over some of the nuances of how those obvious differences actually influence the way that you use the cameras and talk about where they excel and offer my own perspective after having used them for the better part of this year. My hope for this video is to give you some perspective and some insights as to which of these cameras could be right for you if you are new to Fujifilm and you aren't really sure, aside from the obvious physical differences between the X-T and the X-H, which one is appropriate for what you want to do, what you hope to do, hopefully <laughs> I can give you some idea. First of all, I want to say the X-T cameras encompass kind of a wide swath of the cameras, but I'm mostly focused on the higher end cameras. The current gen is the X-T5, but a lot of what I'll say here pertains to the X-T4, X-T3 and going back. The X-T30 and the X-T50 have some similarities, but the actual functionality of some of these dials isn't exactly the same. As far as the X-H cameras, I have the X-H2S, but everything that I say in this video will pertain to the X-H2. They are physically identical. They operate the same way. And again, a lot of what I say will pertain to the older X-H cameras as well. But I will get into some of the ways that the current generation actually performs, what they can and can't do. A lot of people say that the grip on the X-T camera is too small, it's not comfortable, and I'm not discounting anyone's experience, but I don't think that Fujifilm set out to design an uncomfortable camera. And I think that the smaller grip is part and parcel with the way this camera functions, just like the deeper grip goes hand in hand with how this camera functions. You'll hear a lot of people, me included, tout the tactility of the X-T bodies, and I do think that that's a thing. Settings on a PASM style camera like the X-H have a level of abstraction, or maybe just an added level of looking at the LCD to confirm settings that you don't necessarily have on the X-T camera. For instance, all of your exposure triangle settings are controllable with physical dials that have the number values of the settings on them to include the aperture ring of the lens. Whereas on the X-H cameras, typically you will control your shutter speed and your aperture with the command dials on the front and the rear of the camera, or you can control the aperture using the ring on the lens. But that means that you have to look at the LCD or the EVF to actually confirm or to see what those are set to aside from the aperture on the lens, of course. Controlling the exposure settings on the X-T cameras feels more deliberate to me, a bit slower and considered. It reminds me that I am the brain behind the image and not the camera. If you are used to PASM style cameras, maybe you're coming from a different brand, you will be right at home with the X-H, whereas the X-T might take some time to figure out. You can set the X-T cameras to aperture priority, shutter priority, and operate them in much the same way as an X-H camera. But if you do that, I feel like you're missing out on a lot of what makes this camera fun to use and different to use. So, smaller body, less grip, bigger body, deeper grip. And that's often the end of the conversation that you'll hear from a lot of channels, but I feel like aside from just the dials on the X-T cameras, the shape of the grip is just as much an influence on how you operate the camera as the dials are. So let me talk about what I mean. The narrow grip allows you to adjust your grip and to change the position of your hands and your fingers more actively so that you can actually manipulate the controls on the camera than the deeper grip on an X-H camera does, which essentially locks your hand into position and you operate the command dials with your index finger and your thumb, the shutter obviously with your index finger, and then the focus controls fall to your thumb, they very naturally fit to where your thumb is, both the joystick and the AF, AF on button. The narrowness of the X-T camera also means, for me at least, that you support the weight of the camera and the lens with your left hand and your right hand is much more sort of loosely gripping the camera. The deeper size of the X-H means that you are supporting the weight of the camera with your left hand, but less the lens than the camera. And I would say it's more of a 50-50 balance between your left and right hand on the X-H cameras, whereas it's much more like 70-30 or maybe even 80-20 left hand support, right hand is just sort of controlling things. You frequently bring the X-T camera up to your eyes to confirm the settings, whereas on the X-H you're probably relying on the LCD to see your settings and the EVF so again, you just sort of have your right hand locked into position, hence the deeper and more comfortable 
grip on the X-H. With that said, if you do end up using the X-T and put it in aperture shutter priority like it is a PASM style camera, then you probably will find that the less substantial grip is not as comfortable. Which also brings up the subject of lenses. And Fujifilm has sort of like a two-tiered lens lineup where you have these bigger primes that are f1.4 to f1.2, but they also have a matching set of primes that have the same focal lengths, but they're f2 and they are much smaller. And I think those lenses are a great fit for the X-T cameras, although I don't have any of those f2 primes, so I only have the bigger f1.4s and 1.2s. And I find that those lenses are just fine on the X-T. I do think that there's probably a point at which big lenses do become unwieldy on the X-T. I'm not really sure where that threshold is. I will say that the only big lens that I have is the 150 to 600, and it is big and cumbersome and not a really great match for the X-T, especially if you want to hand hold it. The smaller grip might mean that actually carrying the camera, the X-T camera around, is less comfortable over time, especially if you've got bigger lenses. In which case, it does make sense to use a strap with the X-T just to help you when you're carrying the camera. The layout of the autofocus controls also highlights the different methods of working with these two cameras. On the X-T5, you've got the AF on button up here, which falls right where your thumb is naturally gonna going to rest, but the joystick is lower down, and you really have to move your thumb off of the grip to reach that joystick. Whereas on the X-H camera, like I mentioned, both the AF on button and the joystick fall right where your thumb is naturally going to rest on the grip. So to me, those are the fundamental differences that separate these two kinds of cameras. It really is a form follows function in this case. I wouldn't say that one is pro and one isn't. I've actually used the X-T on more paid work than I have on the X-H, just because I like the much more deliberate and considered way of working with these dials. It forces me to slow down and not get so caught up in the moment and not to worry about trying to capture everything, but trying to make sure that what I do capture is good. Not that it is good, but as good as I can make it. Landscape photographers, people doing more artsy types of things, maybe product photography, studio portraits, stuff like that where you are really creating the shot not only using the camera and the lens, but maybe lighting, all those different aspects of it. The X-T would be perfect for those kinds of situations. I think the X-H lineup is definitely intended for event photographers where you don't have a lot of control over what's happening, but you need to operate really quickly. That could be weddings, corporate events, sporting events, et cetera, et cetera. I primarily use my X-H2S as a bird photography camera in which case I am typically in shutter priority mode. So I'm just using this front command dial to quickly adjust shutter speed. The rear command dial is exposure compensation. And then my thumb is just moving the autofocus point around, changing the size, going from zone to single point, and then using the AF on button to grab focus. That's the general difference between these two cameras, in my opinion, and through my own experience of using them. So now that we know that, let's get into some more of the specific differences between the current generation X-T5 and the X-H2 X-H2S. Surprisingly, they have almost the same number of physical controls that control things on the camera. They just do them slightly differently. The only thing that's not on the X-T5 that's on the X-H2 and X-H2S is a dedicated button for white balance. The X-T5 has a selector switch down here, which goes from AFS, AFC to manual, whereas the X-H2 and X-H2S have a button that's in the same position that is programmed to do the same thing. But when you press that button, it brings up a menu where you make that selection. So again, it's just sort of like this extra layer of abstraction or extra UI layer between you and the settings on the X-H cameras versus completely tactile and sort of mechanical on the X-T. The front and rear command dials on the X-T also double as buttons. The rear one is completely programmable or customizable, just like any other button on the camera. The front one is much more limited in what it's and what it can do, and I actually can't really figure out how to make use of that front command dial button. I think the older versions of the X-H cameras had those pressable command dials, but Fujifilm removed them from the X-H2 and the X-H2S, and I believe they said the reason for that is to make them more weather sealed. Which, speaking of weather sealing, both are very weather sealed cameras, but the X-H2 and X-H2S have more weather sealing points 
and were more thoroughly weather sealed than the X-T5 is. Fujifilm really wanted to play up the fact that the X-T5 is meant for photography. So they ditched the flippy screen that they put on the X-T4 and went back to the tilt axis screen. It does pop out in this direction as well for vertical orientation. The X-H2 and the X-H2S do have a fully articulating screen. The X-T5 also has a slightly higher resolution. LCD, it's not much of a difference. I think it's like 1.8 million dots versus like 1.6. The EVF on the X-H2 and X-H2S is really high quality. It's almost 6 million dots versus around 3.5, 3.6, something like that on the X-T5. And I completely forgot to mention the top LCD or the sub LCD on the X-H cameras. And maybe I forgot to talk about it because it is a bit of an afterthought, I think for me. And from what I gather, a lot of people who use these cameras which is unfortunate because it's taking up a lot of real estate on the top of the camera. Perhaps a, an exposure compensation dial or something could make better use of this space. So I've been trying to incorporate the top LCD more actively and really just by sort of moving a lot of the info that is cluttering up the LCD and the EVF, you can sort of move that stuff over to the top LCD. But I think the problem with it is that you're not really looking at the top of this camera like you would be on the X-T cameras because <laughs> your your controls are there. But the controls aren't really on the top of this camera. And if you're using the top of the camera, you're you're doing it more by feel than you are by, by eye. Smaller size of the X-T5 also means some compromises when it comes to input output connections. So it has a micro HDMI versus full size on the X-H2 bodies. And it does not have a 3.5 inch headphone jack. So if you want to monitor audio with the X-T5, you do need a dongle that goes from the USB-C to 3.5 inch. The X-T5 has dual SD card slots. So UHS-2 SD cards, you can use them as redundant or backup or sequential, however you want to do them. They're exactly the same. Doesn't really matter which card slot you have in use if you don't have both. Whereas the X-H2 and X-H2S have an SD card slot and a CF Express Type B card slot. And that brings us to the other difference between the X-H2 and the X-T5. They are essentially the same cameras when it comes to photography. They have all of the same capabilities. They have the same sensor and the same processor. The, really the only difference between them is a result of that faster card on the X-H2, which has a, a deeper buffer. Faster buffer basically means that you can take more photos before the buffer starts to slow down and the camera needs to write all those photos. So even though the X-T5 and the X-H2 are essentially identical when it comes to photography, for video, there are some substantial differences. And I think it comes down to the smaller size of the X-T5 and also that CF Express card slot. The X-H2 can record 8K video using the full width of the sensor and also a 4K HQ, which is oversampled from that 8K which also utilizes the full width of the sensor. The highest resolution you can record on the X-T5 is 6.2K, but that is actually cropped in to the sensor. So it's about a 1.4, 1.5 times crop. And then it also has a 4K HQ, which is oversampled from that 6.2K, which is also cropped. So the only way to get full width recording out of the X-T5 is with a much lower quality 4K and I think that's like a line skipped or maybe a pixel bend. So it's a substantially lower quality than the 4K oversample from the 6.2K or the 6.2K, but again, those are cropped. So hopefully that gives you some insight into which of these two types of cameras is right for you. If you've got any questions, comments, concerns, you know where to put them. And as always, I appreciate you watching the video and hopefully I'll see you in another one.